So we're going to go ahead and continue on from our last video and we're going to start at problem number four and we're going to cover three problems in this video. So problem number four says for a group of 20 men, the median weight is 180 pounds and the range is 30 pounds. If each man gains 10 pounds, which of the following would be true? They want us to say, OK, what will happen to the median weight and what will happen to the range? So two things that we need to know already is what does the word median mean? Median just means when you have all the numbers in order, what is that middle number? Median, middle. And then it says the range. The range, in order to find that number, you take the highest value, you subtract the lowest value, and you're able to get the range. So let's see, for example, let's pretend that we have three men. The median weight is 180. Let's just give a random number for the highest weight. Let's say the highest weight is 20. So remember, you take this number, subtract this number, and it should equal 30. So if you do 200 minus 30, you get the lowest value, which is 170. So in order to make those three values have a range of 30, these are the numbers that I'm going to use. And these are just a hypothetical scenario. Median is 180, range is 30. So if we make each one of these men gain 10 pounds, what are their new weights? The first one would be 180 now, the second would be 190, and the third one would now be 210. So what happened to the median weight? The median weight went from 180 to 190. So the median weight increased. What happened to the range? Originally the range was 30. Now let's see what the range is. So again, you take the highest value, 210, subtract the lowest value, which is 180, and you get 30 as your range. So the range has stayed the same. So our answer is gonna be A. The median weight will increase and the range will remain the same. We're gonna go ahead and go on to our next problem, but it's very important for you guys to really understand how to find median, mode, mean, and range. You're gonna have a lot of questions on your test about those four things, and they're gonna assume that you already know how to find them. So now we're gonna to go to problem number five. Now we're looking at problem number five, and again, we see that it's a root. We see some answers that have square root in it, and we also see that the equation is written in standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c. So we know that this is a quadratic equation, and we're gonna use the quadratic formula in order to solve this equation. So again, what is a quadratic formula? x is equal to the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four times a times c divided by two times a. So now we just have to identify what is a, b, and c of this equation, x squared minus two x minus two. So the a value comes before the x squared. There is nothing there, so we know it's an invisible one, so a is equal to one. b comes before the x, so the b is gonna be negative two in that equation. And then the C is the constant or the number by itself. And in this case, it's negative two. Now that we have the values for the three of them, we can go ahead and plug it into our quadratic formula. So X is equal to the opposite of B. The opposite of negative two is positive two, plus or minus the square root of B squared, negative two squared, minus four times A, which is one, times C, which is negative two, all divided by two times one. So now I like to take what's underneath the square root and I like to solve it on its own so that I can solve it without the distractions. Negative two squared minus four times one times negative two. Negative two squared is negative two times negative two, which is four. Bring down the minus sign and then I make a box over this and I go ahead and multiply it out. Four times one is four. Four times negative two is negative eight. So it's gonna be four minus negative eight Minus a negative becomes a giant plus sign. Four plus eight is 12. So 12 is gonna go under the square root. So now let's go ahead and rewrite that equation. X is equal to two plus or minus the square root of 12 divided by two. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna break down the square root of 12. Now, if you were to find the square root of 12, it's gonna be a long decimal point. We don't want to deal with that mess, so we're not gonna do it. But we can break down the square root of 12 by saying the square root of four times the square root of three. Now, we know what the square root of four is, that's two. 
we don't really know what the square root of 3 is, so we're just going to leave it as the square root of 3. And so now we can rewrite the square root of 12 by writing it as 2 times the square root of 3. So we're going to write that instead of the square root of 12 in our equation. So it's going to look like this. x is equal to 2 plus or minus 2 to the square root of 3 divided by 2. Now we're just going to simplify. 2 divided by 2 is 1, so x is equal to 1 plus or minus 2 divided by 2 is 1 times the square root of 3. Your question may be, Miss Amber, how come you didn't do the square root of 3 divided by 2? It's because I didn't want to. <laughs> no, it's because that 3 is protected by that square root. Just leave it alone. Leave it as is. How can we rewrite this in a simpler way? Well, 1 square root of 3 is just the same as saying 1 plus or minus square root of 3. So our answer is going to be 1 plus or minus the square root of 3. So if we go to answer A, that would be our answer. If you have any questions, please just write your questions below. We're just going to move on to our next problem. But I am interested in helping you guys, so please write your comments below. If you have another quadratic equation problem and you can have a picture of it, please send it to my email. AmberRay50 at gmail.com. Okay. So this question says, what is the product of the following expression? They're assuming that you know what the word product means. Product just means you're multiplying them out. So we're multiplying 4x minus 8 times 5x squared plus x plus 6. For some of you, this may be very simple, but other people I know, they kind of struggle with the basics. And so I'm going to break this down as much as possible. So it's going to take a little bit of time. Please hang in there because I know it's going to benefit you guys by strengthening your skills. So please hang in there and you're going to see, oh, okay, Miss Amber, that's how you multiply variables that have different exponents. So we're going to go ahead and distribute everything that's in this first parentheses and we're going to multiply it by everything that's in that second parentheses. We're going to start with 4x. So 4x, we're going to do times 5x squared. So on the side, I'm going to write 4 times 5x squared. 4 times 5 is 20. There's nothing to multiply that x squared. Oh, my goodness. Miss Amber totally forgot that there is a 4x. Sorry, sorry, guys. 4x times 5x squared. Okay, that's a little bit different. 4 times 5 is 20. And then we're going to do x times x squared. Anytime you're multiplying variables that have the same variable, they both are x's, you just add the exponents. So there's an invisible one there, so it would be x, 1 plus 2, which is x to the third power. So it would be 20x to the third power. So 20x to the third power. Then we're going to do 4x times x. So Miss Amber's going to just erase this because I don't want us to get confused. So now we're going to do 4x times x. There's an invisible one. 4 times 1 is 4. x times x. x times x is equal to... These both are to the 1 power, so it's x, 1 plus 1, x squared. So it'll be 4x squared. Okay, Ms. Amber's going to erase that. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so now we're going to do 4x times 6. So 4x times 6, 4 times 6 is 24. There's nothing to multiply the x again, so we're just going to bring it down. So that's plus 24x. And we've multiplied that 4x by everything that's in that second parentheses. So let's go ahead and do this bottom, the next one, sorry. So we're going to do negative 8 times everything that's in the parentheses on the right. So we're going to do negative 8 times 5x squared. So negative 8 times 5x squared. Negative 8 times 5 is negative 40. There's nothing to multiply that x squared by. So it's going to be negative 40x squared. This is a lot of talking that I've been doing, guys. Thanks for hanging in there. And then it's going to be negative 8 times x. So negative 8 times x, which is negative 8x. And then it's going to be negative 8 times positive 6, which is negative 48. Okay. So it's going to be negative 48. And now that we multiplied it all out, let's just go ahead and combine like terms. Before we combine like terms, I'm just going to write it out one more time. That, we have, that way we have some space and we can see everything clearly. All right, now let's go ahead and combine like terms. So 20x to the third power. Do you see anything else to the, to the third power? 
No, we don't. So we're just going to bring it down. 20x to the third power. Now we have 4x squared. Do you see any other values with x squared? Yes, I do. Negative 40x squared plus 4x squared minus 40x squared is negative 36x squared. Okay, then we're going to move on to the next value, 24x. So 24x minus 8x, 24 minus 8 is going to be positive 16x. And then we have our last value, which is negative 48. There are no other numbers by themselves, so we're just going to bring down negative 48. And our new expression is going to be 20x to the third power minus 36x squared plus 16x minus 48, whew, which is A. So I'm going to stop it here. You guys did a great job today. Thanks for keeping up. Thanks for making it all the way to the end. Please comment below if you have any questions regarding the questions or the problems that I did for you guys today. If you have a picture of a problem that you need help with, send it to my email, amberray50 at gmail.com. And if you guys find my videos really helpful and you'd like to donate to my channel, that would allow me to continue making more videos for you guys, then you can find the link in my about me section and I would appreciate it very much. Anyways, I hope you guys do well in your tests. Please, please, please keep following me and give me a big thumbs up if you like my videos. Have a good rest of your afternoon.